announced that for the 2017 season, we'll be hitting the road full time. I hope you're ready because hello and welcome to the 2022 Las Vegas Challenge presented by Innova. Stop number one on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. You are here watching Joe Mez Pro with Nate Sexton, Jeremy Colling, and Paul Ulibarri. Best season ever is upon us and we are going to start here with Jackie Chen, the fella from Taiwan who's already been over here for three events, fifth place at the Wintertime Open. We are all so excited to see this guy play. He comes with a lot of hype and a man who is also known for the hype, James Conrad, second season after an incredible breakout season with MVP last year. He's looking to build out on that impressive resume. And three-time Father of the Year recipient and fan favorite 2020 champion, Nate Sexton, last year's 17th place, looking to build a little better finish this year. We'll see. And the man who really broke out at this event last year, Ezra Aderhold, 1098 rated round, second place, only one position better than that. Twenty twenty, last tournament before COVID, I had a good off season that year, just playing with friends. Had a hot start and was able to hang on and play well. It's one of my uh, best wins of my career. I guess it just tells me I know that I can have great success here. I tend to feel that way about most courses. If I, if I play it in my plan and execute, I, I know I can do well. Um, last year was kind of a breakout moment for me. You know, starting the year off strong, got second place, kind of the highlight of the, of the season for me. I don't think the world title makes me feel much more pressure to play well. Things definitely are a little different, but also kind of the same. Like, I feel like more people are kind of wanting some of my attention and my time. Not to say I couldn't win again, but to do so in such fashion, it almost feels like I've already peaked, but I know I can continue to improve from there. These calls set up to my game really well, so I know if I play well, I'll, I'll be in contention, and that's kind of all I can ask for calm day like we have today, I feel pretty confident in really attacking the basket. These courses are kind of a whole nother beast when the wind really picks up. It's a lot of long shots, so anytime I can throw a nuke, you know, I, I definitely like that. Pretty straightforward golf, you know, just throw it in the fairway and, and take your shots when they come. It's not a complicated uh, thing out here trying to win at disc golf. You just have to stay in bounds, make putts, get birdies. Nothing sneaky, just try to play your best. It feels like the biggest year yet for the disc golf pro tour and for disc golf in general, and I'm incredibly excited to be right in the middle of it. I'm stoked, man. I don't know. I mean, it's, you know, it's good to have the season back. 2022 season, beautiful weather. Las Vegas is always great being an Innova flagship event. You know, I just want to be out here and, and play the kind of golf that has given me a good career. Hope I can sneak in there and snatch a couple wins. 2022 season starts right now. Let's do it.
And we are off hole one, par three, 233 feet. We have this nice feature of the yellow hazard. You're gonna have to cross that with that nice little green path. Hopefully you don't go too far because that putt back's gonna be pretty tough. And James kind of touched on this a bit. This is basically a Las Vegas zero wind day. I mean, there were times, there are gonna be times when the wind picks up a little bit, of course. It's, you're never going to get a completely still day, but... Well, they always say you can't win on day one. It's coming in a little... Oh, okay, that actually, the palm helps slow it down, but that's going to be a pretty tricky first putt of the season there for James. I think it's interesting that 233 feet to start the season has never played so short. Yeah, it, it, it is a very tricky shot because you want to land it just short of the pin to kind of get the slide up to the basket. But if you do that and you come up too short, you're going to be out of bounds. So Nate, you're going with your rat here, correct? Yes. And I feel like with all the Beautiful. adrenaline for the first tournament of the season, you just kind of juice it naturally. Certainly the big mistake being short. You don't want to be putting from that hazard. Though it's treacherous because even on the way back, you go really long. You have a putt you really have to think twice before you attack. This is another popular play with the high spike forehand. Yeah. Perfect for Mezra. You like exposing that the, the knife, the edge of the disc coming down with a lot of velocity, just grabs right there on the, the soil. That's perfect. I was lucky enough to play in a skins match with Chen a couple of days ago, and he has all the game. Let me tell you what. Distance, touch, putting. Forehand? Yeah, forehand, distance, mm -hmm. touch. Probably could putt with it too. And this one is gonna, is it short or is It's half in, half out. Oh, Count wow. It. <laughs> That's nice. Just barely. It's, it's gotta be nice having a couple of events in America under your belt to start the season. That's not his first competitive shot here in the States. I think he probably has more tournaments than us already this year. <laughs> oh, it's my first event. Same. You'll? Oh, it's your second, right? Second, yeah. Down it. The other two putts here, James probably up next. He's still, uh, still 15 feet away for his par, but Ezra and Nate, less than 10 feet for their birdies. Still just a little bit of work left. James is 99.9% .9 of the time good for those. Yeah, I like that Heiser play that Sexton and Ezra played because then you can throw hard. You can throw it hard up left and then that negates all that touch that you have to have to clear that bunker. And then you get these nice little touchy dinker putts for birdie to start the year. And we're off. Three birdies, one par, and on to hole two. The second easiest hole on the course. 2.59 average for his 324 foot par. Three, there is a OB right in front, which you wouldn't think would be, be a problem, but I've seen a couple people throw in there. But there is an out of bounds long. Other than that, there's really not much danger here. There's a forehand play wide left, but most players are gonna go for either a mid range or a fairway driver high and let it just stall just past these bushes here. Try to get it close to this basket. That's just blocked. The base of the, the basket is blocked from view from the tee. 
in years prior we have a predominant right to left wind today not a lot of wind a little breezy here and there but not enough to really affect your shot that's a nice shot catches the top of the hill that's really what you want you want a little more ground play to kind of push you over that edge but in the circle nonetheless yeah i'm happy with that you don't really want to clear it in the air and run down the back side i think this is just a mid-range well, that's the perfect play just catch the top edge of that hill it's not going to stay up there it's just going to barely scoot down that's a great shot from ezra And give us a little insight on Jackie's power here. Is, is he a guy that likes to club up or club down? Is he going driver, fairway? I think fairway. <gasps> a great shot oh my there. Goodness. He definitely has a, a lot of power. Not not Ezra level or anything, mm -hmm. but but he has a very smooth putt as we're gonna see through this round. I, I was really impressed with his game. Oh, I really like that angle. Getting it flat, stalling it out so it's not pushing forward. It's almost coming backwards right there. Look That's that. what, where, why he's able to land it so soft. Jackie first up from about 37 feet. Good release, just a bit low and right. It's kind of a scary putt, 30 feet or so. Yeah, maybe a, just a touch closer, but yeah. I was really happy to make it, I'll tell you that. Yeah, if, if you just slide past the chains, even if you catch a few chains on the way down and it goes by, you could find yourself at the same distance coming right back up. But a very nicely released putt, and you're off to a good birdie birdie start. And James is high and in. As we're even closer, he's going to have a tap in for two consecutive holes of B to go two under through two. Ooh, I did not see that. <laughs> oh, 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 my goodness. That's a scary one. That'll wake you up, though. You like getting away with those, that's for sure. Early in the round, specifically, just. All right, take that. Looking at hole three, our first par four of the day, measuring 666 feet. New tee pad location here this year that kind of moves the tee a bit to the left. It takes away the big hyzer flip line that some players were using to really eat up the majority of this fairway and get eagle looks, even a couple park jobs occasionally from the biggest arms in the game. That's going to be a lot more difficult now because you have to throw a more severe hyzer angle to start this shot. Still the OB on the left. Nothing really to speak of on the right side. Well, I like this play going. A little side piece. Yeah, it's not good. Ooh. Oh, no. Wow, sky job. Yeah, it was a bad release. But, uh, yeah, I was trying to just play position, but I really got the nose up. Well, all that airspace over there to the right, and the whole fairway is all safe, so not going to pay an extra penalty stroke price for that shot. Yeah, that thing went way right, but luckily there's really no out of bounds over there. And he ate up so much distance that he'll have pretty simple up shot from there. I don't know how James continues that momentum through that jump step. He is so impressive with that, so smooth. He also drifts his off to the right, but uh, no harm, no foul. Inbound still. Very subtle headwind on this tee, so I feel like you couldn't really feel it on the tee, and then people were letting them rip, and they were all kind of drifting over to that right side. And by bringing the tee pad over here to the left side, you really bring away that big 
flexing backhand turnover shot that gave you that extra distance. Now you gotta really trust that Heiser flip game to get into position. And that looked like a boo-boo. Uh-oh. It's tough. You see three guys in a row go way too far right. You try to make an adjustment. Unfortunately, he did a little too much and he's gotta go to the drop zone here. Tough drop zone, really. Yeah, I was gonna say, it looks kind of far. I believe it ranges in at about 380. Wow, a good shot, good recovery. Give himself an outside chance outside the circle or is he inside the circle i would say just near the edge mm -hmm. got that for par this was about 365 feet not exactly where you practice from no wow deal okay you like those And these guys threw it so far that they just have little chippers right in the green. I'm just gonna skip the zone, go a little bit deep. He's gonna have a circle two look for the birdie. Yeah, I didn't really get that left skip, kind of skipped straight on him. I love Ezra's putt. He is a very no-nonsense putter. He really gives it a, a lot of force, a lot of momentum behind his putt, but very rarely do you see him not fully commit to his putting stroke. That's a great par save there for Jackie. All right. Thank you. Squeaky. Sometimes. So everyone's going to finish the hole in three throws, but unfortunately Jackie will tack on the penalty stroke and we'll move on to hole four. That that hole has to be one of the easiest ones it, of yeah, the year. It's the third easiest. Eh, I wouldn't say of the You think of the year? I mean, you, he just threw it straight up in the air right. Easy bird. Yeah, 0.4 below par. We see quite a few that are around that range. Yeah. But yeah, that's, it certainly feels like one of those must gets for sure. Out of bounds down that whole right side, as you saw there from the sky. A really fast 390 feet. It doesn't feel like it plays anywhere close to that. Ooh, that's nice, but a foot farther, and that's just two yeah. feet. Yeah, yeah I, I I couldn't see it from there, and I was certainly having dreams that maybe when I got up there it would be just based, but right. not quite. I feel like last year we didn't see Ezra throw a lot of sidearms, and already we've seen him throw a few. He really turned this one. Well, he definitely has the distance. He's got the power. Yeah. I mean, he's. it's going to be hard for him to find the right disc sometimes if you got that much power i don't know maybe i'm wrong he's got a great forehand a very rare two-step run up there for conrad as he's gonna be out there in conrad country circle two very popular landing zone for this hole is that a putter It looks like it. Putter a mid-range, but I like the play. It's coming in slow, but that's going to get a little scoot out there. To Yep, circle two as well. Like you said, Paul, very popular landing zone. Even when you throw it really good, you're going to catch that slope and kind of just zip over there. Anytime the base of the basket is obscured, it makes it so tricky to get that distance right in your head. As it will take his first par of the round. Oh, wow. Awesome. Beautiful. So clean out of his hand. Look how little flutter there is. It's just barely moving off that perfectly flat line right on the pole. Elevated basket from that range, a little bit elevated in the stance. Wonderful. Oh. 
James off right on the second putt in the first four holes. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Little low. Oh, for the perfect start. <laughs> Oh yeah, you hadn't missed one yet, had you? <laughs> Couple cleanups. Tricky little hole. I mean, it, it, it is kind of off the tee. It favors that left to right into that green because just super fast coming up off the right side there. This The whole beginning of the whole front nine, it feels like, okay, the season's starting. Let's get our nerves. Let's get going here. Okay, the season started. Like, let's get going. It just it has that feeling of like, okay, we're off to our off to the races here. And there's so many wide open holes out here that this course is designed to be played in the wind. So when it is calm, you're thinking to yourself, this has got to be a birdie fest. And every par just feels like it hurts. I mean, this is a tournament that in the last few years has certainly been won with a score between 40 and 50 under par. So you don't have a lot of time to mess around. I mean, you really need to start mm -hmm. stacking them up to be in contention come Sunday. Another little 370 foot two finger here. Very similar shot as the last hole, honestly. Jackie. If you have it. Really pushes this out wide. This is going to get a lot of, and it's not going to get that run. I don't think there's ever been a tournament in four rounds where I did shoot 50 under. So. <laughs> This would, that would be the first for this me. This would be a great time to start. <laughs> Just to put it in perspective, you, you have 72 holes. And if you get 32 pars and the rest birdies, that gives you zero chances for bogeys. You don't really get that many chances to par and still win. That's nice. a great forehand. Yeah. That the, that's your X-Cal? Yes. Nice little hill behind it to slow it down. That'll leave you a nice... Probably right at 20 feet, I'd say. Yeah. I guess essentially you're going to have to birdie 60 to 65% of the holes. Again, with no bogeys. Ezra, that's a nice adjustment from the prior hole. It's going to be parked. If the conditions stay like this throughout the week, I would imagine that 50 number, you might want to circle that as somewhere near the winning score. I feel like once again this week, every year the players get better and better. And this year we are introducing so much more of the international players that we've just been missing playing with. I haven't missed them. <laughs> <laughs> I miss watching them. I haven't missed playing against them though. <laughs> It is going to be a lot harder to get top tens and top five finishes this year. No doubt about that. Absolutely. Talent overseas is tremendous. And we haven't played against them in two years. Aside from just a few players who made the trip over in 2021, we have just been watching them and saying, my goodness, stay over there, please. <laughs> Do not take our placements. But they're here, man, and it's going to be great to watch. little closer than the last hole you think yeah where's the celebratory yeah. sound you can't just give us the wah, 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 wah. hold your horses man <laughs> as we're back on that birdie train four down through five nice one cup thank you thank you some claps get you going dude they, they like me how i'm about <laughs> it that helped so much dude it does. Air. Nate. Here we are, man. Hole six. The triple island. Ooh. Par four. Controversial hole. Tricky hole. 294 feet uphill. You're only safe if you're on those little island areas. A lot of strategy. I am going deep. Going for the long ball here. Trying to get on the green in one. 
You famously said you'll just not play this hole for par or for birdie. I'm sticking to it, but <laughs> I'm going to look for a par now because that was way too wide. They did move the tee. It's more difficult than it has been in the past for that forehand shot. Yes, correct. Backhand may be a little easier up the middle, I think, mm -hmm. but it is a little bit different look. And like you said, Yuli, once again, Ezra leaning on that forehand, and that's really not have That's just way too far right, and he's going to have to recede to that first drop zone as well. And I feel in some ways that that drop zone is harder than the tee pad. Even though it's shorter, you're no longer playing the hole the way that you had intended, and just things get dicey from up there. <sighs> That'll happen quick. Gosh, that's the worst feeling in disc golf. Playing safe and going OB. And I think we're going to have a full group. Oh, no. Jackie had a nice touch there. It looked like that was drifting left. But one player safe, and the rest will move to just really one of the hardest 250 foot shots. Maybe a little bit closer, 230. It's touchy though, so and so the way touchy. this uh, green is, the nicely done. It's grabby. You see how it kind of like clipped and then did that circle with the finish of the of the disc right there. That yeah. happens with a lot of good shots. It'll clip, catch, roll, and roll a lot for, farther than you thought. Or it's a lot of times. Oh no, Ezra's gonna have to go up to the next drop zone, but. If he doesn't make a 60 foot putt, he's looking at a double bogey. And it really feels like a triple bogey because the hole's 294 feet. Yeah, you can't really. No one's walking away happy with a four, I don't feel like here. Even though that is a par. Mm -hmm. James will be walking away with the four. Good approach. And now, when you get on the green, it's really just jump putt time and you get to take your birdie and. When you see Ezra just two quick throws off to a hot start, and next thing you know, he's looking, he's staring at a six, that three starts to feel really good. Especially if you try to run this. Didn't, smart. Look at that roll, though. You see yeah. how it kind of clips and then takes off? That yep. short grass. How many times have you? Oh, oh Nate. My goodness. Yeah. That's, oh, okay. That wasn't good, but it was in. How many times do you see that little extra circle roll be the difference? It just take someone, looks like it's going to be in bounds, and then that quick little spin. Heartbreaker. It's odd how this hole sometimes, when you go for the two, it feels like, okay, I'm going for the two, but I'm risking the six. When the three feels so easy, the two is just right there in front of you. It's... It's a quirky hole, but ends up being a lot of fun, and there's a lot of drama behind it. Hole 7, par 3, 358. This one is off this little slope going down towards the out-of-bounds path that you see this cart driving by on. So come and play flat, low backhand, trying to skip back into the hill. Flex forehand is also an available option, though you really want to make sure you're not having a lot of right moving energy where you're going to go down that hill out of bounds. Jackie electing to play the low turnover forehand. He doesn't even really go turnover here. He just wow. it's just flat and it's just fantastic. Oh. Come on, sit. Sit yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty good. This will be a fun follow flight. Yeah. It just doesn't, it's less flex than I've ever seen anybody do it, but just a, a really good angle control, fantastic skip, and then the roll. That's the scary part. Beautiful. From his perspective, he has no idea that it's right behind the pin, or could you see that curl up? Uh, we could see, there were some spotters down there, I think, so okay. we had good indication. I'm trying to go with some flex, and this is just shanked. Oh, that's, that's... This is about to get really lucky, and I'm not exactly sure how. What? Because I thought I threw that way did, out of bounds. It didn't even look like it hit the tree. It just stopped right there. I don't, I'm not sure, but I was really fortunate there because that was a bad, bad shot. 
I really, I thought that camera angle would help us determine what happened there, but it really was still hard to tell. Here's your typical play. Throw the hyzer wide, try to hit this hillside. Oh, and look at this. It's just, that's exactly how you drop. Two perfect shots. Wow. Low hyzer. Get a little skip in your step. Mm-hmm. Introduces a few more trees than the forehand line, but the way that it skips back up the hill really is nice for the uh, for the landing. Feels safer too. Yeah, it you does. know when you're going mm -hmm. straight at it with like mid range or something that feels like a little bit too much error could go wrong there. This is looking good as well. Oh my, just breaks. <laughs> was a zone. Three yeah. inside the bullseye. Three follow flights. All three well deserved. Let's see, I don't get why mine didn't get a follow flight. Because these are all getting follow flights. I don't know. Actually, I do understand why. Well, you could earn one right here. Yeah, being a hero, not always advised. <laughs> Still out, folks. It's three-time father of the year, Nate Sexton. And just to be clear, that's just my HOA. That's just 12 houses, though I did win the award a couple times. Oof, boy. Adventurous. Did uh, you feel like you like you had already earned the four before you got to your line, you're out of bounds, and you just try to get a four? Or I, I just remember saying that was so much more exciting than I wanted it to be. <laughs> you don't like excitement in that way. No, Excitement's everybody, great I mean, in so many other ways. These guys, they, they weren't exciting. They were just parked. Yeah. That's Nothing what I'm exciting about that. At least we got, a, you're right, we got some excitement. That's good. Hole eight. One of the best holes I feel like on the entire 54 hole wild horse golf complex, 735 feet low, kind of an awkward tunnel shot off the tee. And you want to get every bit of 450 off the tee to set yourself up in, in position to carry the around 350 foot approach over the golf green, which is out of bounds. That is absolutely perfect. Yeah. Look at Pretty this thing run. too. I mean, this was a powerful shot. Okay, yeah. That's that's about 500 feet going down the hill with the skip. Didn't and, look uh, like he did much. That was impressive. James always looks like he does a lot. <laughs> <laughs> just, that's just his M.O. What, did he catch the edge of the tree he, or he something? He hit the tree, and he had no idea. He's trying to see where it finished because he was almost falling down. Yeah. So he didn't actually see that happen. Mm. But it, it took a lot of speed off his shot. Is I Ezra looking high? Yeah, I heard rumors that Ezra oh, wow. was doing the big hyzer. And I don't see why not if you're him. I mean, he's got 400 out of this play, no problem. Why would you even play with a low ceiling if you can get 420 feet just going around the trees? So that, that'll set him up near the 400, maybe 380 range to the pin. Uh, yeah, I think closer, most likely. Watching him do that, were you like, man, eh, maybe I got that? No, I I, <laughs> I wasn't too worried about it. <laughs> I, I want to just get a little bit more hyzer angle here. I, I gave up a lot there because that got so flat. Wow, they got a lot of play, though. Yeah, that's going to leave a 380 in, 360 in, right? Side yeah, I think, I, I think my caddy lasered it around... Uh, 330. So, oh, got up it, there okay. Really? Okay, wow. way farther than I thought. This is an extremely difficult shot from back there. This is a, I think this is just James playing safe. Yes. It, there's a bunch of willows on the right side of the green that completely obscures the hyzer uh, approach. And you don't have much room to hang it out wide at all unless you go dead straight at it. And, and there's OB just to the right of the basket. The green is very small. I think that's the smart play for him. I'm going to try to play. Maybe we trying to play on the green at all? or I was okay with it getting to the green somewhere on that fringe mm -hmm. area is what I was looking for. That's a good result for me, just uh, catching that hill and slowing down. 330 is prime sex and firebird approach distance. Looks a little hot. Catches the top of the hill, oh, though. Yeah. That is a great equalizer. Yeah. Sit oh, down. Oh, sit down. Sit. 
Okay. And is that that high grass right there by where the spotter is? That's OB, correct? Yeah, and down by that fence as well. Mm -hmm. So Jackie, after his beautiful drive, has this left. He's going to play that low runner off the green. This looks really nice. Beautiful. Perfect. Exactly how you draw the hole up. He's going to have to be careful. I know he likes to get aggressive, but with this angle, doesn't look pretty good. I guess he had that headwind helping him a little bit to navigate the speed of that putt. That didn't look like a full James Sen, but like one of those floaty, maybe this whole dance over the rim type of efforts. Like that one. Kind of like that. That's three in a row that I, you can, I'm sticking my tongue out in disgust. Even though I've made three putts in a row that were about 20 feet. As you're none walking of them were, and cleaning your disc out of the basket, though. None of them were more than a centimeter over the rim. So I need to do more of what he's doing. It's weird how making putts can sometimes make you feel like you're not going to make the next putt. You see three of them hit the rim in a row. You're probably not feeling great about your next 30 footer. Or maybe you are. I don't know. No, you got me pegged. Not feeling great at this juncture. Jackie should feel pretty good about that, though. He's on a three-hole birdie streak, and now he is at five under par, tied with you for the lead on this card. Focus, get rid of any of those pressure thoughts and really center yourself, like where you're at and the shot you're throwing, trying to just really let everything besides the basket bleed away. gets me every time you know what gets me every time hole nine because there's no <laughs> chance for a birdie for me <laughs> <laughs> and this par, is brand new yeah par three 427 <laughs> foot no i'm calling lies on oh, that this thing plays 475. like 75 470 i swear it yeah OB right though, be careful with that. And if you hang it left uh, with too much hyzer, you could have a tricky approach. But for the most part, you're gonna see a lot of pars on this unless you make the mistake of going right. With us teeing off in that little bowl area, you actually can't quite feel the true conditions of what's going on out in the fairway, I feel like. There's a lot of times there's something completely different happening just 40 feet in front of you. And believe me, there's 10, 15 people who have plenty of power to get this there, no problem. But, I don't think they're sitting at this table with me right now. Yeah, no, Jeremy, you got you got the big boy power. I threw it in the lake to the right. <laughs> Did you know there's a lake to the right? I didn't. I, I found out. I had mentioned it in my breakdown. Yeah, I found that lake. Ezra's one of those guys, though. He can get there, and he's going actually very aggressive Whoa. hyzer angle. Beautiful Jeez. shot. Jeez. Yeah, that, I mean, that should tell you everything you need to know, though. I mean, Ezra, full blast send, and still 45 50 short but people back at the tee can't tell that mm-hmm people back at the tee like yourself just flipping it out of bounds I I have a few words to say in my defense I practiced this hole in a hurricane <laughs> I watched Ezra throw and it looked so easy I read the 427 on the sign and I thought it's time to go big bad idea straight out of bounds James looking to get himself Conrad I mean, country look, and that's that's like a little outside Conrad. Country. And James rips. Yeah. Like he mm -hmm. rips. He really does. Full and he's, he's short. I've seen him throw putters 420 feet. Yeah, for sure. You get to clean up that bogey, and that'll be your first blemish on the scar scorecard for today. This is what the hole looks like for about 80 to 90% of the field. Okay, drive. Jump putt from 80. It's just tough. Even though it's a little longer than the sign says, it's so it's just kind of blind from the tee. I was just mm -hmm. having a really hard time deciding 
how aggressive I should be because the conditions during the practice round were so brutal that no one on the planet could have reached it. Oh, and Ezra, beautiful drive, even better putt maybe. Fantastic result, one of 11 players on the day. 9% of the field, that's a higher birdie count than I would have guessed. Third hardest hole. It has that hill, hillside right in front of you on the tee. Good Ooh, putt there. Very good bogey. And that save. just makes you throw it up high, which is a tough shot to throw a penetrating, let's, we'll call it 450. I'm not yeah. I'm not settling for two 427. I'm right no, around 465. But with that uphill, it, and a nice clean up there as well, it pushes you up higher, and then your mm -hmm. your flip is going to actually be stalling. So it's, it's a tougher distance whatever that distance is yeah whatever it is it, it's made very difficult by the little t-pad they put in front of you only hole on the front nine that averaged over par so that says something about the front nine a very attackable front nine as you see here we've got a few players several players almost the entire leader leaderboard at six under Let's see if that back nine continues with that pace one Jeremy Coling on the board. Looks like a lot of players playing pretty well. Just that little bit of wind, maybe keeping people away from the incredible scores and some little bit harder course uh, layout than we've had in previous years. And you got to think, first tournament of the year, first nine of the year, we got some nerves out there. I felt them. I know you felt them. Jerem, what about you? In the commentary booth or on the, on the course? On the course. I felt it both, for sure. That was a fun front nine but i you know it's easy to say it's fun when you're seven down through seven yeah blake elliott said that to me once and man <laughs> he was having a good time thanks to our founders <laughs> club for all their support i'm just reading random names up here trying to trying to think about when uh let's see who we got rachel vandenberg oh yeah she told me she was having fun when she was seven down through seven mm -hmm. say, you're right i think most people feel that way but thank you so much make sure to subscribe to the youtube channel join the patreon we're trying to do big things this year in 2022, and we'll be right back with the back nine from Las Vegas.